was kissing you with my eyes open But you said, you said, keep them closed and be in the moment So I did, I did, did my best to make you feel wanted But what about what I want, what about what I want And what I wanted was to crash with my dumb friends on the Welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Today we are doing a thrift flip video and we're starting with this mint colored pair of pants that I got in my last thrift haul that are way too big on me. I put them on inside out and then making sure that the back seam was in the middle, I pinched up to where I felt like would fit me and then I got chalk and I marked it. And this method is really easy especially when pants don't have back pockets but it's a bit different when they do have pockets. And then I laid it down on a table. I turned these pants to the side so that I could see where I had marked. And I folded it with the back seam in the middle. And this makes it so that when I sew, it will be even. And then I'm going to sew all the way from the point that I marked to the end of that back seam. Where the seam meets the front of the pants, that's where we are going to stop sewing. So I'm going to draw a line with chalk diagonally all the way to the end of that seam and this makes it so that when you sew it and wear it nobody can know that you you reduce these pants and again this method works great for pants that don't have back pockets but when they do have back pockets it, it does get a little different and there I pinned it so that it will be easier for me to sew I didn't have mint green thread but I did have white and that would do because no one would see the color of the thread. And don't forget to backstitch when you are done so that it doesn't unravel. And here I put on these pants just before cutting them to make sure that they fit me properly and to make any adjustment if necessary and they were fine. So I cut this excess fabric about an inch away from where I sewed and I cut an inch away so that in case I ever gained weight I would have room to adjust these pants because your clothes are supposed to fit you you do not need to fit your clothes Baby, I've been going nowhere lately It's time to start all over and go for it Cause they don't even the next item we are going to flip is this green pair of pants that I showed you in my last thrift haul and I said I would make these into shorts. So I laid them flat on a table first and then I got a pair of shorts that I like the length of. I marked with chalk where I wanted those shorts to get to and then I folded them in half and used the mark that I made as a guide to where to cut these shorts. Now you can leave these shorts as they are if you like the fit of them, but I wanted them to be a bit wider, so I'm going to show you how I do that without it being seen. So I'm going to open the seam in the middle, the one I'm showing you that connects the two pant legs. That seam I'm going to cut it open and that's where we are going to add our extra material so that's what it looks like now with the front and back separated so I got one of the pant legs to use as extra material I marked first about three and a half inches and then I added half an inch on both sides for seam allowance, making it about four and a half inches. And I marked the top as well and drew lines from the top and bottom to use as guides on how to on where to cut these panels of fabric. We are going to cut both the top and the bottom together to end up with two pieces of panels of fabric. 
now we are going to put the right sides together with the right sides touching we are going to sew these two panels together and there we have one long panel so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to align this panel with the back part of the of the shorts making sure that the seam of the panel matches the seam of the back part of these shorts so that it looks natural and nobody can see where we added the fabric from and then we are going to pin it together and there we, we are going to use those pins as a guide on where to sew And there we have it the panel has already been added to the back part so what we are going to do is flip it inside out so that we can sew the panel to the front part of the shorts as well and remember to align the seam of the panel to the seam of the shorts and pin them and we are going to repeat the same thing and there we have it that's how you make pants or shorts wider without making it visible to other people and now we have this excess fabric that we are just going to cut it now if you like your shorts distressed you can leave them here but this material doesn't really look good distressed so I decided to hem it and I folded about half an inch and sewed it and there we have the shorts all done the next thing I'm going to do is to adjust the waist so that it can fit me and I'm going to use the same procedure that I used at the beginning but first I took off any belt loops at the back because I didn't want to lose them and I ended up attaching them later after I reduced the waist and I used the same method again I put them on marks where I wanted to cut them and then I drew a line all the way till the end of the seam at the back I also ended up taking a bit of the excess material to make a scrunchie with if you don't know how to make one I did a video last year and I showed you two different ways to make it so I'll insert the card up the top left or right I think on how to make a scrunchie so this is what the pants look like before what can I do when a million things are running through million things I can undo I just sleep walk I just sleep talk, that's all I got What can I say with a million things I can't erase Million people I can't say Next up we have this beloved, beloved sweater of mine I love this sweater so much but it has such a weird length So I wanted to crop it and also make it into a sweater vest So I grabbed one of these sweater vests that I already own that is cropped To use it as a template I used chalk to mark the length that I wanted it to be and then I extended the line just to make it easier for me to cut. I also wanted my sweater vest to have a band so I took the other half of the sweater and I measured about half an inch just above the band and I drew a little line to mark where I would cut it. As you can see I'm being really careful with this sweater because I really really like it and I didn't want to mess it up but there we have our band 
and the sweater. So what we are going to do now is we are going to turn the band inside out. And then we are going to sandwich the sweater in between the band. I think you can see it better than I'm explaining. But you just make sure that you pull the sweater through the band with the raw edges facing the right the same direction. And when you start pinning, you make sure that the seams are aligned. And as you pin, you might find that sometimes the band seems a bit smaller than the sweater and that's okay. Just make sure to stretch the band, stretch the band so that it fits the sweater. I'm going to use the pins as a guideline on where to sew. And there we have our sweater. It's finished. I could leave it as it is but I really wanted to make it into a sweater vest. So I took the cropped sweater vest that I had earlier to mark the armholes and I just marked where the the end and the beginning like the armpit and the shoulder line were. I think you understand what I'm saying but I marked the top and the bottom as well to give me a guideline on where to cut and then I drew a curved line to connect the two points that I had marked. I used the lines as guidelines on where to cut and there we have our basic shape of the sweater vest we are making but we can't leave it as it is because the fabric will fray and also the sweater vest that I already have has a border around the arm so I'm going to make one for my sweater vest as well using the arm that we just cut. I laid the arm flat and cut it at the side to open it up. And then we have the arm all laid out. So I'm going to mark from the middle, I'm going to mark about two and a half inches. And that's going to be about the width of one of the bands. I marked the top as well. And then I mirrored this on the other side to make two strips of fabric. And there we have two strips of fabric each two and a half inches wide to use as the armbands for a sweater vest. What I'm doing here is I'm going to fold this strip of fabric with the wrong sides facing each other so that one side is folded and the other side has raw edges. Then I'm going to take one of the ends and attach it to the seam at the side of the sweater. And I'm going to pin along the raw edges of both the sweater and the band. And now I'm pinning the other end of this armband right next to where I pinned the first one at the seam of the side of the sweater. And then I located the midpoint of this armband so that I can pin the middle of the armband to the seam at the shoulder of the sweater. I think it's easier for you to see what I'm doing than for me to explain it but make sure that the ends are pinned to the seam at the side and the middle of the band is pinned to the shoulder of the sweater so that when we stretch this band to fit the sweater it doesn't scrunch up one side more than the other and remember that the raw edges are all facing the same direction and this is what it looks like when it's all pinned and this is what it will look like when we overturn it So I'm going to do that to this other side as well. And then I'm going to take it and sew it. I'm starting by attaching the two ends of the armband together. And then I'm going to now sew the rest of the armband to attach it to the sweater. And 
this is what the finished sweater vest looks like and this is what it looked like before And lastly, we have this t-shirt that I thrifted about a year ago. And I really don't wear it anymore. So I wanted to revamp it to make it more wearable. And so first I took a t-shirt that I like the fit of. Because the first thing I didn't like about the t-shirt already was the fit. So I marked where the arms reached and added about a half an inch of seam allowance. And I did that for both sides. And then I cut the excess fabric off. I did the same thing for the length of the t-shirt. I marked where I wanted the t-shirt to end. Then I added about half an inch of seam allowance. And then I used that mark to draw a long line that would act as a guide for when I cut the t-shirt. Now I'm going to hem all the parts of the t-shirt that I cut by folding about half an inch and pinning it together, then sewing it. And then I'm going to turn this t-shirt inside out and lay it on its side so that the side seams of this t-shirt are facing upward. So I'm going to take the remainder of the fabric that we cut and I'm going to measure from under the armpit all the way to the hem of the t-shirt. And I'm going to mark that with chalk. For the width of this strip of fabric, I used about three fingers worth or about two and a half to three inches. So I'm going to cut this strip of fabric. This is what we are going to use to create the ruching at the side. I'm going to create two strips of fabric for both sides of the t-shirt. And for the remainder of the excess fabric, we don't throw it away because we're going to use it later. Now for this strip of fabric, what we're going to do is we're going to place it such that the middle of this strip of fabric is smack on top of the seam of the side of the t-shirt so that we can pin it together. So we are pinning the seam of the t-shirt to the middle of this strip of fabric. And then we're going to pin the ends of this strip of fabric as well. So that by the time we are done, we have three parts that are pinned to the t-shirt. The middle of this strip of fabric and both the ends. And then we are going to sew straight lines down the middle and both sides. This is going to help us create two channels that we are going to eventually pass through a string. So this is what it looks like. I did it on both sides. And now we have two, two channels on either side of the seam. And make sure not to sew the top of those channels because we are going to need them. Now we are going to take the remainder of the fabric that we had and we are going to get, try and get as long of a piece of fabric as possible. I used the hem and I just opened it up and I split it into two so that I could have two long pieces of string or, or like thin pieces of fabric and this is what we are going to need to create the ruching at the sides. So you'll need two safety pins and the string we made. 
I'm going to take one of the safety pins and attach it to one end of the string. And then I'm going to attach it to the hem of the t-shirt. I'll take the other safety pin, attach it to the other end of the string. And then I'll use this to help me to pass this string through the channels. When you get to the end of the first channel, just use the safety pin to go down the, chan the next channel just as you did with the first one. And at the end, just pull the string and deattach the first safety pin that you attached to the hem of the t-shirt. Pull the string so that you can create this drooging effect by gathering the fabric. I removed the safety pins and tied a knot to make sure that the gathers do not unravel. I felt like my strings were a bit too long so I ended up cutting them a little bit. So that, that's what one side of rouging looks like and I'm going to do this to the other side as well. And this is what it looks like when it's done. What can I do when a million things are running through? Million things I can't... That's it for today's video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want me to do more thrift clips, more thrift hauls. And I'll definitely do them. See you next week. Bye-bye. I can't sleep. I just sleep all